Surely it's not just you. I know your ninja are never far. I'm surprised Moro is my favorite Ninjago villain. I mean, his season isn't even in my top five. He's arrogant, obsessive, short-tempered. Why do I even like him? So if you're insane like me, and I've been keeping up with Ninjago for a long time, you've probably heard this comparison before. Both Kai and Moro have been obsessed with the Green Ninja Prophecy, been caught in similar situations, and had their fates decided while pursuing an artifact. But have you ever just sat down and really contemplated their parallels? Like, really just mulled them over? You have? Well, me too, which is why I'm making this video. <laughs> These are probably going to be a lot quicker than I thought it'd be, so let's just jump straight into it. As stated before, Moro shares a lot of similarities with early Kai. And Kai even outright states in season five. Sensei says you won't give up. Well, neither will I. Which is our only real acknowledgement that they're similar in any way. They're hot-headed, reckless, and obsessed with wanting to prove themselves to be the best. To be the Green Ninja. Both grow frustrated and moody at the slight chance of not being the Green Ninja, and their recklessness and obsessive nature have led to both themselves and the people around them getting hurt. Wu even has similar reactions to both of their situations. He claims that he can't teach Moro if he does not listen, and that it may be best if Kai never reaches his true potential. Giving up on both of them. Because... That's definitely what a teenager needs to hear from their teacher, you know? Distracted by his own obsession, Moro constantly hurts his fellow students and puts himself in harm's way. He's so desperate to prove himself that he strikes out on his own to figure out how to change his own destiny. With Kai, his obsessive nature led to the capture of Lloyd, hurt his relationship with the rest of the cast, even if said relationship is mended by the end of his true potential episode, and almost dies. Something Moro couldn't escape. Before we continue into this section, I just want to say that I would have never clocked this connection without a post by Upsetty. Go check out the Tumblr blog. <laughs> it reads, Sometimes I think about how Kai made his way out of an inferno by accepting that being the Green Ninja wasn't meant for him, but that didn't make him any lesser. While Moro died in an inferno because he couldn't let go of the idea of being the Green Ninja and viewed it as his only source of worth. And I just never realized this. I've seen this show, what, four times now? Probably more. And I'm only just realizing that Moro's death, like, directly ties to Kai's true potential. While on his trek to prove the golden weapons wrong and find the realm crystal, Moro both somehow manages to get cursed and dies in the caves of despair due to an eruption. Meanwhile, Kai is almost met with a similar fate. Kai is completely dead set on getting the fanblade. He's desperate to prove himself while Volcano is threatening to erupt around him. This eruption is also his fault, by the way. He set it off with a sword. Something he was explicitly warned not to do. Another instance of recklessness from Kai that affects literally everyone around him. Anyways, he's dead set on going down with the fan blade. But it's not until he realizes he's not alone in the volcano, that Lloyd is trapped with him and there may actually be more to Lloyd than meets the eye, that he decides to let go of his obsession altogether. He realizes it's not worth such a big risk. Of course, Kai holds lingering resentment towards Lloyd up until season 4, but he manages to handle this much better than Moro ever could. For the most part. At least he wasn't hurting Lloyd out of his own free will? Let's go back to Upsetty's post because they're right. These two were both put into dangerous situations and given a choice. Die trying to prove your worth? or escape and lose your dignity. Kai very clearly chose the latter, choosing to save himself and Lloyd rather than risking it all for the Fang Blade like he was originally planning to. Meanwhile, Moro stayed in the Caves of Despair. He stayed and continued to search for the Realm Crystal, even after death. And once he does eventually claim the Realm Crystal, he's in so much denial about the prophecy that he thinks he is the Green Ninja after simply taking the Gi's mask from Mia. He refused to let his obsession go, which was inevitably his second downfall. Before we move on, I'd just like to say something that probably doesn't amount to anything. But Moro dying in the Caves of Despair while Kai chooses life in the Fire Temple feels not intentional, but there's something there. 
Moro dies where the first golden weapon was found, and Kai chooses to save himself in Lloyd where the last golden weapon was found. Moro never got to see his journey to the end, and Kai's was only just beginning. Does that make sense? Probably not, but it's staying in the video. Moro represents what could have happened to Kai. He represents every worst aspect of him that was bubbling up inside, waiting to come out. But on the other side of things, Kai represents what Moro could have been. What he was even showing signs of becoming in Day of the Departed. Granted, we only saw him for five seconds before he disappeared, but he seemed... chill. The comparisons between the two were never explicit in the show. But I did notice how often Kai specifically was pitted against Moro and how the battles between the two started to change and shift tides. We start with Moro having the upper hand on Kai, and that continues until their third fight, where Kai gets the upper hand, and then that just keeps going. We see Kai overcoming Moro, overcoming this side of himself that he had been reminded of a mere season before. Moro's not the green ninja, and neither is he, and they both come to realize that that's okay. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around this long. Um, I know it's pretty short. I didn't realize how little characterization Moro has in the show until I watched all his scenes in season 5 and went, uh-oh. <laughs> A lot of the comparisons people make I think are fanon and I didn't realize that until now. But I also didn't want to just not make the video because you all made it very obvious that you wanted the video. <laughs> So I just wanted to make it and get it out there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!